Hey guys, welcome to the review for chapter 10, which is all about two sample statistics. Um, two samples being you have two different samples, you want to compare them. You want to compare their proportions or you want to compare their averages, um, means, uh, and you can do that with a hypothesis test or you can do that with a confidence interval. So it depends on what you are asked. Um, Generally, they'll tell you what to do um, as far as the confidence interval or the test. Um, but I would recommend, you know, if they say construct a confidence interval, then make a confidence interval. But if they say, um, you know, test whether or not the proportions are equal, um, then you should probably do um, a significance test, especially if it's one sided. If it's two sided, you can do a confidence interval or a test. If it's one-sided, definitely do a test. Anyways, the overall picture is exactly the same as it has been the last two chapters. Um, state plan do conclude, um, stating either we're going to construct a confidence interval to see if there's a difference between blah, 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 or we're going to do a two-sample hypothesis test to see if there's a difference between blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's your state section. Overall, that is exactly the same. The state plan do conclude. The other things that are the same are the general formula for the uh, test statistic. Um, so I'll write all of these things down for you. Okay, so far what's the same? Four-step process, state plan do conclude. Two is your test statistic, which is always your statistic minus your parameter all over the standard deviation of the statistic. Your general confidence interval is exactly the same, which is your statistic plus or minus your critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. Okay, so overall, that's the same thing from chapter eight, chapter nine, and chapter 10. Okay, that's the overall big picture. Um, you're just testing statistics um, to see if things, to see if your data, to see if your sample is different enough from the claim that it probably didn't happen by chance. Okay, so that's kind of our big picture end goal. Um, and so as far as then what's different, we can go into a little bit more um, detailed explanations. Okay, so number one, let's say we're talking about um, confidence intervals to begin. Um, your stating depends on, and actually everything that you do depends on what kind of data you have. So if you have categorical data, you want to use proportions, um, because you can only talk about proportions of colors, not means of colors. So we're going to look at the proportion, um, if it's categorical data, um, and means if it's quantitative data. This is all still pretty general. Um, I'll do an example later so that you can kind of see the difference. But um, for your stating portion, right, if it's quantitative data, you're looking at means, um, which means you're probably going to be doing a t-test because you usually don't know sigma. Um, and since chapter 10 is all about difference of proportions and difference of means, um, it'll be a two-sample test or two sample confidence interval. If it's qualitative data and we're doing proportions, you always use Z. Always, always, always. Okay, key thing as well, make sure you remember to state things in context. So if you're talking about difference between men and women, you should have men and women in your state and also in your conclude. Um, and then anytime you're doing your a test, you need to have your null hypothesis, your alternative hypothesis, and then state what the parameters are. Okay, Next is planning. Planning, you're always checking your conditions, but again, it depends on if it's quantitative or qualitative data. Um, are you doing proportions or means? Um, what those actual uh, checks and conditions look like. Okay, the same thing between these two is that your random check is exactly the same, the independent check is exactly the same. Random is, are both of your samples random? Okay, because in this case you have two separate samples. So you have to check that both are random. Independent, you have to check either that each um, 
individual in the sample was selected independently or each trial was independent or that the population is 10% um, is the sample is less than or equal to 10% of the population. So that's the same for both quantitative qualitative that doesn't change. So what does change um, is the check for normality. If we have quantitative data, so we're talking about means, um, either n has to be greater than or equal to 30 so that um, the central limit theorem holds true, or if n is less than 30 and greater than 15, you need to check for extreme skewness and extreme outliers. And if it's even smaller than 15, then you, you are just strictly looking for outliers, any kind of outlier, any kind of skewness. Um, if anything weird appears, you really can't use the t-test safely. If you want to get full credit, you have to include the graph. Okay, And since we're doing two samples, you should have two graphs. So box plot, normal probability plot, histogram, whatever you need. Um, but definitely... You need to graph both samples, and yay, conveniently, your uh, calculator does most of that for you. So, full full credit, include the graph, super important. If you are dealing with proportions and qualitative data, your random and independent conditions are the same. So, the only thing that's different is your check for normality, which is n times p has to be greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p has to be greater than or equal to 10 for both populations. For both, I sorry, both samples, and that's all that's different in the planning step. Um, the do stuff gets a little more complicated, um, depending on if you're doing a confidence interval or a hypothesis test. Um, things will be different, but still kind of the same as everything that we've been doing before. The general picture is still exactly the same. All right, quantitative data means um, if you're doing a confidence interval, you still go back to this basic formula, your statistic plus or minus your critical value times standard deviation of the statistic, okay? And usually we don't know sigma, so we'll be using a T star. Um, so your statistic is going to be x bar 1 minus x bar 2, and then plus or minus whatever your critical value is, T star, which we get from the uh, degrees of freedom and uh, the T table. Um, and then the standard deviation of the statistic, which is that really ugly um, square root of standard deviation of the first one over n1 square root of n1 squared plus the second one n2 square that. And we get this nice fam fancy formula, which I will rewrite for you nicely on the right. For proportion confidence interval, same thing, except you have p hat 1 minus p hat 2 plus or minus z star, and then the standard deviation of uh, proportions. Right, so if it's uh, qualitative data, your confidence interval is p hat 1 minus p hat 2 plus or minus your z star, which you get from whatever your confidence level is, times the standard deviation of the statistic. And in this case, right, our statistic standard deviation is... Uh, p c hat 1 um, times 1 minus p hat c all over n1 plus um, p hat c times 1 minus p hat c over n2, um, where p hat c is the combined uh, proportions with the two samples, right? So you combine the, <clears throat> the two proportions together. Now, if you're doing a hypothesis test, you're not going to create your confidence interval. You're just going to find your test statistic and then your p value. So the probability of getting that test statistic or anything more extreme. Um, and so that's still using this formula over here, stat minus parameter over standard deviation of statistic, except it's going to be x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus mu 1 minus mu 2 all over your standard deviation or standard error, which is going to be that for means. Um, and then same thing for proportions. So I'm just going to give those formulas to you. And then we just want to test what's the probability, right, of getting that t value or anything more extreme. So it might be less than or equal to whatever your t value is. It might be greater than. Um, you might have to multiply it by 
two, if it's a two-sided test, um, just depends on what it is. So basically, long story short, the big picture is exactly the same. All the little details are things that you can kind of just fill in as you go. Um, just make sure that you have figured out what kind of a test it is. Are you Z? Are you using Z or T? Um, and are you using proportions or means? Is it a confidence interval or is it a hypothesis test? But I mean, you guys know how to do this stuff. I, we've been doing this forever now. Okay. Lastly, is just concluding in context. Um, if it's confidence interval, we are 90% confident that the true difference between P hat or P1 and P2 is between this and this value. If it's a hypothesis test, we reject the null hypothesis, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, or whatever your conclusion is at your alpha level. Um, so again, same stuff we've been doing. Um, if I, this is tech week and it's a little crazy, so I'm going to stop the video here. Okay. Um, if I get a chance to get away and do a video with some examples, hi Kiefer. <laughs> um, I will get that to you guys uh, ASAP. Okay. Good luck.